All right, everyone. How are we starting? We got the preacher in the building this morning. I mean, this evening. So, yeah, this evening. So, guess we can start. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna start us off with a word of prayer. So, get by your guests. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful, beautiful day you've given us, dear Lord. And thank you for this opportunity we have to come into your house to worship you, dear Lord. And I pray you prepare our hearts to hear from you, dear Lord. Uh, allow us to open up our, our hearts and souls to each other to, to bring in testimony. And, um, we, and dear Lord, we just, uh, all importantly, it's all about you and giving you praise and glory, dear Lord. And we just love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We'll get y'all to turn to page 69 in your brown hymnal. Page 69, we're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse of More About Jesus.
A1. 208, Amazing Grace. 208. Oh, 203. 203. Page 203, Amazing Grace. All four verses. <laughs> take like 10 years off. I, it must have really made Jesus happy. You mm -hmm. know, and, and I just I just feel like we're all running out of time. Yeah. You know, and the opportunities are there. I hardly ever get to see any anybody, but it's just in the way we act or how we how we present ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> One thirty six. One thirty six. One thirty six, precious name.
takes the candle stick away. I've, and that's a terrible, we don't want that to happen. You know, and I praise him. And I look around and see all of y'all, and it's like, I'm so proud of each and every one, because I feel like you belong to me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know I, how proud I am of you and what we've accomplished, and I know when we come together and God sees the joy in us, that makes him happy. Amen. And that's what we're here for, is to glorify him and let the whole community, and people's noticing us. You know, people that I, I went to a funeral over in Arkansas and they said, what are y'all doing over there at Lake Country? You know, so people is noticing what's going on. I mean, that's all I've ever wanted, is a little country church that we can love each other, put God first, and just love each other, care about each other. And we got it. And, and I'm so proud of y'all, but I give God the glory. <laughs> Brother John, I had a birthday as well this last week. <laughs> and um, everybody, thank you so much for the blessings and the, and the birthday wishes because they were definitely needed. I uh, was having a rough week this week, and I really needed them. And, and I just appreciate everybody reaching out and saying happy birthday. Good to see your hubby here tonight, too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's good to have him here. Man here 26 days. Wow. He's going to be able to come more often in just a little while. Nice. He lead singing one night. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you didn't want that. <laughs> can't give up, can you? I, I you can't want me to put some plugs in that bucket? <laughs> I can't carry a tune in a bucket with a lid on it. Do you want to crack it? <laughs> All right. <coughs> what else? We got time for one more song. 209. 209. <coughs> We'll sing the first, second, fourth, and fifth verse of Precious Memories. <laughs>
testimonies and, and all the shouts of hallelujah to the Lord. Thank you so much for these songs and praises that we have to sing to you, dear Lord, and, and that the love that you show us, and dear Lord, I pray that we just show it back to you, dear Lord. I pray that you just help us to be the Christians you'd have us to be, and prepare us to hear from you, dear Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, before we get started now, I have a pair of glasses that found out there in the, I don't know where they were found, outside's all I know, and I don't know whether they've been run over or stepped on or what, but if anybody's missing a pair of glasses with bifocals in them, they might be able to bend these back to shape. So, anyway, they're going to be up here for the night, and they're going to clean it up too, by the way. Anyway, they they were found outside, so. Now, I don't think you'd recognize them. I don't think you'd recognize them even if you could recognize them. If that makes any sense. Uh, this morning we we talked about about the church, and we're going to talk about the church again tonight. And, you know, I told y'all this morning that uh, when you think you know the word church is only in the Bible and it begins in the New Testament. Jesus, when uh, he encountered uh, 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 the the testimony of. of uh, of Simon Peter in Matthew 16 and 18, he, he made the remark that upon the testimony that Jesus gave him, that upon this rock, he said, I'm going to build my church. And that's the first time the actual word church is in the Bible. And I, I wondered about that. Have you ever wondered about that, any of y'all? Why is the word church only there? Was, was church not before that? Was church not in the Old Testament? Was the temple not a part of like a church or was the tabernacle not a church and and so I, I got to looking at that stuff and you know uh, the definition of church is, is this it's an organized congregation of believers and I didn't make this up by the way after I looked at what Webster's had to say and Webster's ain't too good on this definition of church but so I kind of added to it but it's an organized congregation of believers in Jesus Christ that, that's the part he uh, Webster left out who are a part of the congregation by being drawn to Jesus by the Father and born again. That is the definition of the church. It is a, a congregation, an organized congregation. And so uh, that, that's a good definition, I think, of, of what church is and who we are as, as the church. It, the church is not the house de uh, by definition, but it is the place of the meeting, the place where we meet. And so that got me to thinking, and I got to looking up these, and I very seldom ever focus on words. But when this particular instance, I decided, since the word church don't appear until the New Testament, and here's why I focused on it, is because when the, the New Testament or the Bible as we have it today, the King James Bible, was interpreted by those uh, men that King James appointed to it, and I believe was led by the Holy Spirit, I believe all of that was God-inspired, God-led. That's why I trust the word that we have today because I believe that and I hope you do too. If you don't believe that, then you can just write anything here you want and it's okay. But the people who interpreted the, the King James Version of the, of the, of the Bible, and, and I know it's not the first interpretation, but it's the most widely accepted interpretation. It's the one that we use in the Christian world today. And uh, I don't think God would have brought that to us, all those writings, and then had it misinterpreted. Do you believe that? I believe God uh, saved those writings. I believe he knew where they were. I believe he put them there for a purpose. And I believe when the time was right, he had, a, had it interpreted for all of us to be able to see. And, and uh, that's God's design. That's God's plan. That's the way he does it. But there's a word that was in this interpretation. It's a Greek word. And uh, let me... Let me uh, uh, the, the word that Jesus used for church was a word used in the Old Testament. It was a word that was used frequently in the Old Testament, by the way. But because the, 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 the King James writers knew what church was, they were able to put that word in there without changing anything. Okay, do you understand that? And so uh, th this word... Uh, and, and, and the Old Testament was used to describe uh, uh, sacred Jewish assemblies. That's what it was used to describe. And here's the word. It's uh, ecclesia, and it's spelled E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A. 
When I got to looking up the definition of this word, it's a combination of two, two parts. Ek, E-K, means out of, and Kaleo, K-A-L-E-O, and I know it's not spelled that way, but it's uh, spelled uh, Ecclesia, Ecclesia. And uh, the K-A-L-E-O means to call. So it's referring to called out people. Okay? Now that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? So when you look at, at the definition of what the church is and the use of this word, it is the assembling of the called out people. Isn't that great? Yeah. Called, yeah, it's the assembling of the called out people. And that word was used over and over and over in the, in the Old Testament, and it was interpreted in the Old Testament because there was no such thing as the New Testament church, and we're going to get to that in a minute. But it was called the congregation, and it was called the assembly, and it was also called tabernacle. This is All of these words came from this one interpretation depending on how it was used. So every one of them referred to the assembling of God's people for a specific reason and purpose in a designed place. Think about that. All right? God don't do anything by accident. God's a God of order. God and Jesus Christ instituted the church. So in the Old Testament, the same word is used and translated also gathering. It can be the gathering, which is used every once in a while. And, uh, and, and so it was used when they gathered for their religious assemblies and also uh, the word congregation is part of it. So remember those things, the tabernacle, tabernacles, congregation, and assemblies were words that were uh, uh, the same word that was interpreted as church when Jesus said it. So think about that. So uh, uh, when, when you think about it that way and you look back, anytime the called out ones, was, was Israel a chosen people? You better believe they were. They were called out. Matter of fact, part of their, their commandment from God was come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. They were called out to be a nation unto God himself. They were the Old Testament form of the church today. Amen. Yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah. And so when you, when you look at this and you look at what goes on in the church and, and as I got to looking at the scriptures that related to this this word in, 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 the, in the Old Testament, mainly in the Psalms, and there's going to be a lot more of it in the next uh, few days until the Lord gets through with the Revelations chapter 2 now. And, uh, uh, but uh, there's going to be some more of this uh, that's coming your way. And I want, the, I want I need some scripture readers. Would you get your hand up and say, I need one, two, three, I need five scripture readers. Who wants to read for me? Jeremiah, would you read uh, Psalms? And all of these are in Psalms. Uh, Psalm 46, uh, verses 4 and 5. Uh, Sister Terry, uh, Psalm uh, 74 and 2. Uh, Joe, sorry I didn't see you. Uh, Psalm 84, 1 and 2. Uh, Brother Bill, Psalm 111, verses 1 through 3. I got one more. Who wants it? John Terry. Uh, Psalm 133 and 1. And so we're going to look at these, these psalms here and we're going to see uh, where, uh, what it, what, how it translates into assemblies, how it translates into tabernacles, how it translates into congregations, how it translates into gatherings. I want you to look and see uh, what you see from this in the Scripture. And y'all, don't, don't think I'm trying to make the Scripture say anything. I'm not trying to make the Scripture say what I want it to. I want you to see what the Scripture says. Amen? So look at, look at what it says. And you're going to be amazed when we think about the New Testament church and the, the Old Testament, what I'm going to call the Old Testament church or the Old Testament assemblies and congregations and the similarities in the Old Testament, but it was done a little bit different way. And we're going to talk about those a little bit different ways here in just a minute, okay? All right, the first one is uh, from Psalm 46, verses 4 and 5. And, and the Lord is always, the Lord is always the center. The center, all right? He's always the center, whether it's Old Testament or whether it's New Testament. The focus of the congregation, the focus of the assembly, the focus of the gathering is always centered on the Lord God, Jehovah, in the Old Testament. So, uh, Jeremiah, you got uh, chapter... Uh, 
Uh, Psalm 46, verses 4 and 5. Would you read that, please? There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. So he, he refers here about a holy city of God. And look at what he says. The place of what? Tabernacles. The place where people gather. And look at, at verse 5. And God is in the midst of her. Now what did our scripture this morning tell us? Where is Jesus Christ? He's in the midst of what? The church. Amen? And, and so this is the similarity between Old Testament and New Testament. Who is Jesus? He's God in the flesh. The God of the Old Testament is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. He's the same God. There's no difference in the God. Amen? He's in form of Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir, He's one. He's one. But he's in, he, we, we receive Him as the Father. We receive Him as the Son. We receive Him as the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says these three are one. Amen? And so we see the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost in the, in the tabernacles and the, in the Holy City. What is the Holy City of God in the Old Testament? <laughs> Jerusalem. <laughs> Jerusalem is the Holy City of God that's mentioned in the, in the Old Testament. And David wrote about Jerusalem a lot because it was... David was already king when they took Jerusalem to be the capital. David uh, took the, the city away from the Jebusites. It never had been done before. They had a stronghold. He went in there and took it. They destroyed it, and he completely rebuilt it and moved the capital uh, to, that, to that city. So it became the capital. It became the city of David and would later be referred to as the city of God because it was the place everyone in Israel came to to worship. Amen? So that's why it was called the city of God. It was the gathering place of the people of God. That's what made it that way. That's why it got the word tabernacle. And when they came there, God was in their midst, y'all. When we come to church on Sunday morning, we need to come to church with an expectation. We need to come to church with a longing to make sure we feel the presence of God in our midst. And y'all, let me tell you, when you come to church and you cannot feel God in your midst, there's something terribly wrong. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to tell you, you see it all the time. You see people come to church and they feel the presence of God and there'll be a person sitting right in front of them, right beside them, or right behind them that don't feel anything. Amen? What's the difference? Somebody's looking for God and somebody could care less. Amen? Somebody's coming looking for and expecting something from God and somebody is just coming because they, they think that they're supposed to be here. Or they got another reason for being here. We always, always, always need to come with that. And we're going to get to that scripture in a minute. There's going to be an Old Testament scripture that tells us that. And so uh, the Lord is always the center of the tabernacle, the holy place, the city of God, or the church. If he's not the center, that's not what it is. Amen? Because that's, he, he is the reason we gather. And if he's not the reason you gather, you're here for the wrong reason. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're here for the wrong reason. That's why I always tell you, beautiful music is wonderful. Amen? But if you come go to find a church because of the music, you're in trouble. Amen? Amen? You might as well stay home and listen to radio. It's beautiful there too, isn't it? Amen? We come to see God. We come to experience God. We come to feel His presence. And it's there's something about coming together as a body, as a whole, as one person people united in a purpose that makes that a special time to me i hope it does to you too that's what church is about that's why i tell people oh i can worship god on the creek bank no you can't not like you can in the congregation of god because he, he didn't the lord didn't say upon this rock i'm gonna build my creek bank did he upon this rock i'm gonna build my boat <laughs> amen he didn't know how to play ball. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. He said, I'm going to build my church. And what is the church? It's the called out ones coming together. Amen? Amen. And he's there. We're coming here because he's here. He walks in the midst of our gathering here. He, you know what? We're going to get into this in a minute too. But in the New Testament, there's a lot of changes happen in the church. Amen? In this gathering place. A lot of things change. Alright. So even in the Old Testament, the congregation, I want you to listen to this, was redeemed. Amen? Amen. Do you, are you redeemed Amen. tonight? Yes, you're not. You're in a heap of trouble. Right. You know what that means? You have been bought. You have been paid for. Right. Amen? Yeah. That's what redeemed means. He has come and paid your bill. That's right. Was that in the Old Testament too? You better believe it. Uh, brother, uh, uh, no, Sister Terry, you've got Psalm 74 and verse 2. Would you read that for me, please? Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old, the tribe of your inheritance, which you have redeemed, this Mount Zion, where you have dwelt. Oh, did you hear what she said? Now, we're talking Old Testament. We're talking about tabernacles. We're talking, but he says, Remember the congregation, thy congregation, which what? Thou hast purchased. They don't stop there. The rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed. Amen? This Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt. The Mount Zion is talking about Jerusalem again. Amen? Amen? Talking about the holy city, the holy place of God. And it has been, it has been purchased it has been redeemed. Now let me ask you the, 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 the question. What purchased and what redeemed the Old Testament congregation or church? We know what redeemed us. Who redeemed us? Jesus Christ. We were, he paid for us with his death on the cross. But how was this church purchased? How? Amen. By the blood of bulls and goats. Now do you see the difference in the Old Testament church? And, and you see a lot of differences in the church and a lot of the difference in the laws and the actions of the, that Old Testament. We're going to call it church, tabernacle, congregation, assembly, whatever you want to call it, gathering place. The, the difference is it's almost they're almost prehistoric compared to us, yet the same. Because God does not change. His ways did not change. But the Bible tells us at some point, the Bible says that the Lord God was tired of the blood of bulls and goats. Amen. What did he do about that? He sent us his son. Hallelujah. And why did he get tired of bulls and goats? Because they were sacrificing bulls and goats without worshiping him. They were going, and we're not careful. Right. We'll treat the blood of Jesus Christ and the death of Jesus Christ with the same way. With contempt. Amen. Y'all, let me tell you what, worship ain't a, ain't a habit, it's a lifestyle. Amen. He died for us. He's worth all the bulls and goats in the world. Mm -hmm. That blood is. That blood was only capable of rolling away sins for a short period of time. In the case of the nation for one year, in the case for the individual till the next sin was committed. Amen. The blood of Jesus. Oh, praise God. Is able to roll it away forever. Amen. There's a big difference in it, but it's still the, it's still the church or, the, or, or the, the assembly of God's people. So even in the Old Testament congregation, they were purchased, they were redeemed, but by the blood of bulls and goats. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Let me tell you what, when the Lord God himself said that, he meant it, and it applied then, and it applies today. 
And if you're not washed in the blood of Jesus, you are not redeemed. Amen? Amen. If you're not washed in the blood of Jesus, you are not redeemed. You have not been purchased. Because that's the way you do it. Amen. How do, what does the blood of Jesus do for us? In the Old Testament, the blood of bulls and goats were rolled and sent away. What does the blood of Jesus do for us? He takes that sin and He covers it with His blood and He casts it away from Him as far as the east is from the west. He won't remember it against you anymore. He washes you and makes you white as snow. Hallelujah. Amen. Aren't you glad you're bought? Aren't you glad you're purchased? Aren't you glad you're redeemed? Amen. Those people, David, longed for what we enjoy today. Amen? He did. Amen. All right, let's move on. All right, any questions so far? All right, the next one is we come together and worship with expectation and longing. This is what, what we were talking about a while ago. I kind of got ahead of myself just a little bit. And let me tell you what, if you come to church not expecting nothing, you ain't getting nothing. Amen? If you come to church not looking for Jesus, you ain't going to see it. Amen? Unless the Lord does a mighty work through the through the Word in your heart. You ain't, there's, there's been a many a person who came to church not thinking anything was going to happen to them and love saved. Amen? I'm one of them. Amen? I, that Bob Greg got his hand up. Amen? You come to church not expecting anything and all of a sudden, guess what? You come in the congregation and the unity of a body of believers and guess who's there? Hallelujah! There he is. You can't deny that if you ever feel that one time, you're going to long for it again and again and again and again. Amen. Amen. You will. Alright, so let's look at Psalm uh, 84, verses 1 and 2. Jody, would you read that for me, please? How amiable, amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth ye, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Amen. Think about that. What she just said. What she just read. Look in verse 2. My soul longeth. Amen? You know what's wonderful? When you can't wait to get to the house of God. That's a wonderful feeling. You know what's the opposite of that? When you don't want to go to the house of God. And what's the difference in those two ways of thought? <laughs> one sees God when He gets here and one don't. One hears from God. The other one don't. Amen? One feels the presence, the Holy Spirit, the unity of the body. The, they long for the fellowship. They long for the hugs. They long for the laughter. They long for the joy. The other one, I'd rather be somewhere else. Amen? Y'all, that person that says, I'd rather be somewhere else, needs to be afraid for their soul. Amen. I'm telling you. It's not taught in the Old, in the Old Testament or the New, uh, New Testament. It's taught that when you come to the tabernacle, when you come to the place of God, when you come, you come expecting something from Him. Amen. He won't disappoint you. My soul longing. You remember what David wrote again in another psalm? He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Do you say that on Sunday morning or you feel that way on Saturday night? Amen. If you can't wait to get here, it's a good sign. Amen. It's a good sign. But if you'd rather take a dose of Pepto Bismol than come here, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is everything always happens when I'm on here. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Something good always goes down when I'm not here. All the so, good stuff happens when I'm sick. <laughs> not here. Listen, he says, not only does my soul long, look at what else he says. Yea, even fainteth. <laughs> I, I'm almost fainting. I can't wait to get there. 
I can't wait to get there and hear what God's got to say. I can't wait to get there and feel the presence. I can't wait to get there and see what the Word's going to tell me tonight. I can't wait to get there. Glory to God. Boy, how much better would church be if we all felt that way? Amen. Amen. If, if our kids got up, you know what I hear people all the time say, well, I couldn't get the kids up, Brother Bill, I ain't picking on you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've had that same trouble. But amen. You know what? That excitement catches. If we can get really excited about that, I can't wait to get there. Oh, hallelujah, I'm going to church today. Try that on. See how that works. Amen. So he said, My, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cries out to him. I want to meet you there. I want to see you. I want to feel you. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many of you have ever been to a place in your life where you felt all alone that you didn't even feel the presence of Jesus? Amen. Oh, yeah. We've all been there, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. What did you do? Right you cry. You cry out, Lord God. <laughs> don't. Don't leave me, Lord. I need to feel your presence, please. <coughs> Did he let you down? No. Uh, when you cry out to him, he hears you every time. Mm -hmm. He knows. He wants the yearn of his heart. Remember what Jesus said when he looked out over Jerusalem and he sat down. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered you like a hen gathers her brood how often would I have drawn you to myself if you would just listen to me? Amen. He wants that. He longs for that. And we are to long to give that to Him. I think He's earned that right, don't you? Yes. I think my Savior's earned that right as yours. Amen. 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 He, is, he has earned that right. That's, this is what makes David a man after God's own heart. Yeah, David sinned and he did some bad things. Amen. But he was still called a man after God's own heart because David was one of them men. When he did wrong and he was faced with wrong, he always humbled himself before holy God. God knows we're not perfect. He knows you're not perfect. He knows I'm not perfect. But when we're imperfect, we get to fall down at his feet. And He forgives us. Amen? He restores us. There's price to pay. There's always a consequence to sin. It'll mess your days up. It'll mess your weeks up. But He's going to forgive you and that helps. You know it's going to be okay. You know it. So He says, I long, I long, I faint. My heart and my flesh cries for God. Man, don't you wish that would happen across this nation? Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know where it'll start? It'll start in a little old place just like this. Amen. Jesus said, I read a fire, a little spark kindled. Amen. It's got to start somewhere. Amen. And it might as well start with us right here tonight. Right here, anytime. We come together to worship with expectation and a longing for Jesus Christ. The next one. And move on. Next one. We gather to praise Him. How? With all of our heart. Amen? With all of our heart. Brother Bill, you got Psalm uh, chapter 111, uh, verses 1 through 3. Read that for me, please. 1 through 3. 1, at, one through 3. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have a pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. Hallelujah. Hey, I love that scripture, don't you? I will praise the Lord. How? Hallelujah. How will I praise the Lord? With my whole heart. Where? On the creek bank? <laughs> uh, that ain't what he's talking about, is it? He said, in the church. 
in the congregation, in the place of assembly, in the assembly of who? The upright. Who's the upright today? Those who call upon the name of the Lord, those who worship Jehovah God, those are the people he was talking about. The people that live for God are the, known as the upright. I don't care what anybody in politics tells you you are. You're upright before God and they're not. Amen. 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 And you come together with your whole heart in the assembly of the right, uh, upright in the congregation. Amen. And he, he didn't leave much room for argument there, did he? Nope. Pretty he, much explained it. he pretty much explained it. Yep. He wants you to go to church mm -hmm. where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. He wants you to come together in the congregation. And when you get there, he wants you to work. Don't worry about what the fellow beside you is doing. Don't worry about what the don't worry about your wife's doing, your husband's doing, your kids. You come to him with your whole heart mm -hmm. <coughs> and focus on him. And I promise you, he will not let you down. Amen. The works of the Lord are great. That's why we do this. They're great. Sought out of all of them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable. His work is glorious. His work is righteous. And all that endures for how long? Forever. Amen. You ain't got to worry about him doing his part. It's got to be yours. He's good. His part's done. You can take his to the bank. Yeah. Amen. I always tell people, you know what? If you're faithful in a little, he's faithful all the time. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why he said a little faith goes a long ways. Amen. See, you can move a mountain with a grain of uh, a faith the size of a mustard seed. I saw a picture of that the other day. I thought I had a little mustard seed, and it was smaller than a BB between his two fingers, and that scripture was there. To show that if you've got faith this size, you can move mountains. Amen. You know why? Because of who He is. <laughs> if you're faithful that much, He's faithful enough to move anything out of your way. Amen. Because He's great. One more. So we gather to praise Him with all of our heart. Now, here's a biggie. Here is a biggie, 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 biggie. Uh, we got Psalms 133, uh, verse 1. And I'm going to let John read this here in just a minute. But I want you to tell you what I saw in this. We, we must dwell together in unity. Amen? Amen? There ain't nothing worse than going to a fighting, arguing, bickering church. Ain't nothing worse. Amen? Amen? You won't feel at home. You won't feel the presence of God. You won't feel a lot of things. You will feel unwelcome, and you'll feel like you're imposing. Has, has any of y'all <laughs> ever walked into a house where a husband and his wife was just fighting, and you happen to walk in right in the middle of it? Mm -hmm. How'd it make you feel? <coughs> oh, I shouldn't have walked in on this. And you could feel the chill in air. Amen. Mm -hmm. I heard a preacher one time say, don't tell me, it might have been Brother Crow. May not have been. There was a preacher I heard one time said, don't tell me that you can't control yourself when it comes to fighting with the wife. You can't. He said, it's never a question. He said, when I go to a house and he said, I can walk up and hear them hollering and screaming knowing they're fighting on the inside, knock on the door, and they open the door and say, well, hello, preacher. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> and all, they just so hunky-dory. Everything's fine while you're there. And then they, when you walk out, all, it breaks loose again. Amen. You can't control it. Amen. But it, we have to learn to dwell together. He's not talking about husbands and wives. He's talking about church. Amen. John, read that for me. 133 verse 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Okay, he don't say only that it's, it's good, but it's pleasant for us to dwell together in unity. Amen. Because it pays rewards for us to serve God together in unity. For us to come together and know He's in our midst. For us to come together and share. 
for us to come together and testify, for us to come together and tell how great our God is and what He has done in our life. And y'all, you know what? I, and I'm not complaining, but we've all got a testimony. We don't always share it, but we all got one. Amen. How many of you in this building has God not ever done anything for us in your life? I don't see any hands up. Amen. God loves us. Jesus Christ purchased us. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And we owe it to Him to come to His house longing expecting to hear from Him, to be touched by Him, and to touch Him. You know the great thing about Jesus, He'll let you touch Him. You can touch Jesus. Ask that woman with the issue of blood. She touched Him, and when she did, it changed. And you know what was beautiful about that story, Brother Troy? She hit all those people was around our Savior. And that one woman touched him. I ain't gonna tell how many other people that touched him. Go, she touched him. Because see, there's a difference between touching and touching. She touched him. Why? She came to him with a need. She came to him expecting. She came to him believing. She came to him in faith. I just see what she did. She had a need and she needed him to touch her back. And when she touched him that way, that's the way we need to come to church. Yeah. He stopped and turned around and said, Who touched me? You remember that? And his disciples said, Lord, look at all these people and you want to know who touched you? He said, oh, Who touched me? And he turned around and his eyes focused on that woman. Because you remember what he said? virtue. He felt something leave him and go to her. When we touch Jesus that way, something leaves him and comes to us. Amen. When you touch him, you get part of Him touching you. Amen. And everything changes when that happens. Any comments? You can't touch Him without getting Him all over you. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a glass of water when you touch Him, it spills all over you. Show Would you stand? the church. Praise God for the church that's been redeemed by Jesus Christ. Would you close your eyes, please? Bow your heads. These altars are open for prayer. <clears throat> Did you come here tonight? Long time. Did you feel like you're going to faint if you didn't get to come? Well, there's a lot of people that didn't come tonight. They're home. They're napping. They're eating. And everything's okay with them. But you're here tonight. Did you hear him? Did he tell you something tonight? Did he show you something tonight? Is he in your midst? Do you feel him? Maybe you're here tonight and you ain't felt Jesus in so long. Please come down here tonight. Give your life to him. Give your heart to him. Give your soul to him. Let him cleanse you. Let him purchase you. Let him redeem you. Where you can feel him.
bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. I hope that I hope today that you have felt the presence of God. That you feel like you've been to church. Have you ever been to church and went home and felt like you ain't been? I hope you felt that I have encountered my Savior today. That I have heard from Him. That He has taught me something today. You know, I don't care how many times you read the Scripture. I don't care how many times you go over the verse. He can teach you something every time. Every time. Amen. And He'll meet your needs. If you belong to Him and you want to touch Him, He'll let you. Amen. And you'll be glad you did. I love y'all. I pray y'all have a great, great week. I pray for me and my wife. We're going to go up to the Social Security office tomorrow. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm going to get number one and probably number 999 before I get to go back there. So. It's anyway. worse than the driver's license office, okay? <laughs> That's almost as bad as going to drive a lot of all good. I'm just playing. But anyway, y'all be in prayer for us this week, and we're going to be in prayer for all of y'all. And uh, y'all be in prayer for each other. Amen. Lift each other up in prayer. Amen. And and I'm, you'll be glad you did. And those prayers are always coveted. Those prayers are always felt. And, and uh, we need to be people of prayer. That's what Jesus said about his house, wasn't it? Amen. He was talking about that Old Testament house. Take my house is a house of prayer. Amen. And he meant that. And it still is today because we're a people of prayer. Amen. Prayer changes everything around us. Amen. It does. We've got, we've got living testimonies of that in this place tonight. That prayer changes everything. I love you. God bless you. Let's have a word of prayer and uh, be dismissed. Uh, Brother Gary Richardson, would you dismiss us, please? Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, Lord, that we can come here to your house and so <coughs> and worship you, Lord, and just praise your name. We, look, we thank you, Lord, for your, your love, your kindness, your grace, and your forgiveness, and we just pray that you'll be with each one here as we go to our homes. And that we'll have a safe week and week. And uh, those that couldn't make it, that are sick and, and have need, Lord, we, we pray that you'll bless them and touch their lives, Lord, and give them a good health and help them to get better. We just thank you, Lord, for all that you do. These things we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.